Hi people, today we are going to be talking about the Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang and I have to say that I'm a most speechless. I have just finished the second book. The first one was The Poppy War and if the first one was hard to review because there were lots of things going on, uh, this one I think it's going to be even harder because it's amazing how many things the author has managed to put inside this book and how how there's lots of things here that are food for thought and there were lots of moments in which I did cringe because there is lots uh, you have war, you have uh, poverty, you have uh, the power of the aristocracy, you have imbalance of power, you have geopolitical wars, you have economic war warfare, you have refugees, you have lots of things that really pay back a very heavy book that's going to be, you know, punching your soul. So, yeah, I have to say that this one is an amazing book. Um, when I finished the first one, I was completely, and I am still completely in love with it, and I was thinking, okay, let's see what the second book is about, and I have to say that I cannot choose between one of them because both of them are marvelous. This one is like a step ahead because it moves the story forward, we are going to find Rin and she wants to have her revenge, her revenge against, against the Empress, against Daji. And she is going to meet someone, in fact she's going to meet with the Dragon Lord, Neza's father. And he's going to tell her that uh, he wants to go against the Empress because he wants to make this republic. And she offers Rin the chance of enlisting within, within his army. So, you know, uh, together we can work out a way of going to war and deposing the Empress. So, where in the first book we had this war that happened upon land, we are going here to have a navy. And so it's going to be like this uh, naval war. And I have to say that it's amazing the work that the author has put into all of it. I mean, I guess he did, she did a lot of research about it. Because there is lots of things that when I was reading the book, I was like, oh my god, I hadn't thought about that. She talks about the different parts of ships, the different buildings of different ships, how much they weigh, how much they can move, how easily they can, you know, evade or how easily. And it also talks about the terrain, how the differences in, I don't know, water levels, about if it's, uh, you know, if there's going to be ice, if there's going to be different things, that it's going to influence how the movement of these ships is going to work and how the war is going to be uh, able to be fought and all of that and, and it was amazing how much attention to detail it's put into this book. Uh, it's going to be an epic battle, even more blocked shock than the first one and I have to say that one of the things that I love about this book, there's lots of things that I love about this book, it's that um, the author doesn't flinch us away from showing us how crazy, how hurtful, how blood soak a war can be. I mean, she doesn't put these images in our heads so you can be shocked. She does that because it's real, that's how a war is. And I did love how Rin more than once found herself trembling, nauseated, how she threw up, because there's things even though she has been trained as a soldier and she has comrades who are also soldiers and friends and all that, uh, the cruelty of a war, seeing the bodies of lifeless people, that's something that impacts you. And I, I love how she doesn't auto automatically get gets better. Uh, she carries the, the weight of the actions she has been doing with her. At the beginning of the book, she is suffering from, from post-traumatic stress she is addicted to opium and she doesn't want to think about what she has done in the first book. And she doesn't want to think that she is guilty of having killed so many people. Not only soldiers, but kids, women and everyone that was on that island when she made the volcano erupt. So, you know, she she's she's dealing with so many things inside her head that she doesn't she doesn't want to allow herself to think about what she has done and she tries, you know, to be drawn out of her mind so she doesn't have to really focus on what she has done. And I love that uh, it comes a moment in which she has to come to terms with what he has, what she has done and the reasons why. And she, I love how imperfect Green is. I love that she is 
this young woman who is trying to find her place in the world. And I love how far she comes in the second book. And I love how you can look back with her and see that's where you began and that's who, who you are now and I'm proud of you. And that's something that I find amazing. I love that she's not perfect. I love that she makes mistakes, that she thinks that it will be better after what she has done to have someone telling her what has to be done. She doesn't want to decide. She, wants, she doesn't want to take the responsibility. She thinks finds herself thinking that it's better if someone else is take the reins of the situation so she only has to obey and I love how far she's going to come into this book and yeah there's lots of things going on in this one that are amazing we are going to find uh, the idea of geopolitical war economic warfare where there is different um, communities Places. I I try to be very vague here because I don't want to ruin the book for anyone. But I love how it makes you reflect about who holds the strings when there is a war, and there is aristocrats. They are sitting very you know very happily, letting people kill themselves or kill each other because of the ideas that they are constructing on the heads. They are promising you something. They might not deliver it, but you believe them and you follow them. And you know what I mean. I love that this book makes you think about that. I also love that it talks about the differences in power. Power meaning money, race, aristocracy. And, you know, there is a, this different prisma in which you judge people depending on where they come from, the color of their skin, the way they talk. And I love, uh, there comes a moment in this book in which Rin has to come to terms with herself and she realizes that she was ashamed of where she came from. She comes from the roster, um, the roster community, it's it's the, in the south, and they're like, see, like the lesser ones. And when she abandons her home and she goes to synagogue at the beginning of the first book, uh, she is running away from everything she was, and she thinks that she's going to be given this much more opportunities now. And she's reminded by Nez in the first book, that she's less than because she hasn't this white skin that the aristocracy has. She doesn't speak in the same way. She doesn't come from money. So she's going to be seeing those differences and she's trying to, she's going to cool those differences. She's going to learn to speak like a northerner. She's going to be, you know, she's going to never think about where she came from anymore. And you can see that in the fact that she forgets that she has a brother, that she has a family back in, in the, you know, where she came from. And I love when she comes to terms with that in this book and she realizes that in order to fit in, in another place, she, she shed what she was before and she was like ashamed. And I love when she realizes that maybe that's not what's supposed to be, that you don't have to be ashamed of who you are, where you come from. And that's like a social construct that makes people ashamed if they're from a different culture, religion, race, you know what I mean? It's going to be a lot of prejudice in this book as well as in the first one, and it makes you think a lot. Also, we are going to have these um, figures who want to convert everyone to their own religion. And that made me cringe a lot. When I was in uh, at the university, I did this research about the Native Americans and when the Christians came, I wanted to convert them to, to you know, the Christ and the church and all of that and the crazy things they did to them. And that, what happens in this book made me think about that, about this supremacy of the people who think that they have the power. And there were parts in which I was like, it hurt to read it because they thought that Rin's Drin's race was inferior because, you know, suddenly uh, the color of your skin means that you are malnourished. So the, certainly the shape of your school means that you have a smaller brain. Certainly the way in which your eyes look means... And that is spiteful, that is hurtful, and that's sad because that's true. We have seen that and we continue to see that. And, it's, and I cannot believe that, you know, uh, we're in 2021 and we're still thinking about this kind of shit. And I hate that. And as I say, this book really makes you think because you are following Rin and you empathize with her and it hurts when she hurts. And I love that the author has written the book in this way, that it makes you stop reading and began thinking, I don't want um, 
white supremacy. I don't want religious supremacy. I don't want this prejudice. I don't want, it makes you think. It really reaches out to you. And all of that inter intercept with this, um, I was going to say amazing word. No word is amazing, but I mean the way in which the author has um, written about the naval assaults, about uh, the consequences and about the actions that everyone does in this world and how it inflicts uh, results and we are going to have refugees who are going to be trying to save themselves. They are, we are going to see different kinds of refugees running from their for their lives, uh, getting killed. We are going to find them uh, standing in camps, being malnourished, mistreated. And one of the things also that I love about this book is that it doesn't present you people like in... It doesn't present you the world like black and white. Like, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. I love that it's not so clear as all of that. There's times in which Rin has to take a decision and it's like, it's not clear where, whether she should or shouldn't because you begin to realize that, as I say, it's not black and white. Everyone has a reason to be where they are. And towards the end of the, of, the, of the book, I'm not going to make any spoilers, it's going to be seen very clearly because there is this figure, this character, and Rin understands where this character is coming from because the life that this character has lived through is like the opposite of what Rin has lived. So she can understand that character and that the decisions that this character has taken are so different from her own. And that makes you think that sometimes when there is this kind of conflict, it waits on you what's right what's wrong but from your own beliefs and your own experiences what you have lived through what you have learned in this life what you has been taught can position yourself in one side or another side so i love that it's not so clear who are the good guys or the good reasons and i love that there's times in which Rina and his people find themselves thinking I don't know if I am on the right side anymore, if I'm doing the right things. And also, I did love to see Benka again. Uh, she's a character that I loved. I hate her in the first book, and I think it's amazing what Kuang is able to do with characters. How easily you can go from hating them when you see them through certain lenses, but when you know about them more, you can understand where they come from and you come to love them. I love that she rebels against what has been instaurated for her and that she is hungry, angry that the world it's like, okay, you have to rest, you have to be taken care of because you have been raped. And I love how she stands for herself and she wants to find her own worth again. And there's some sentences she says about her value have nothing to do with her can't. Yeah, she says like, like that. And I love that she comes back as this strong character and I love that she has she makes this journey in order to get better. And yeah, I mean, she's an amazing character. I think all of them are. I have to say that I don't know why I wasn't reading these books before because they are amazing. And I do recommend them to you a lot. There's lots of parallelisms with uh, China, with, um, with, with modern Chinese history. I love, as I say, lots of things about this book and I love that they make you think about, as I say, prejudice, race, um, poverty versus opulence, nobility versus uh, people who have less resources, that we have people who have been suffering from post-traumatic stress, that has been abused like Benka. Uh, we, I, I like that we have all these characters who are human, that they make heroes that they make mistakes and they do the best they can with the things that they have and that's something that I love and I recommend these books a lot to you so thank you for watching bye